Hi guys and welcome to the part 3 of this Streamlit series. In the previous videos, we have seen what Streamlit is and we also saw how to add text to our Streamlit app. In this video, we will see how you can upload and display data onto your Streamlit app and also discuss what is, uh, what is caching provided by Streamlit. So for those of you who haven't watched the previous video, here is a quick recap of what we have done till now. So we have imported Streamlit as ST, so we don't have to type Streamlit every time. And then we have used these commands like title, header, text, markdown to add text to our uh, Streamlit app. So now to run this app, you need to go to command prompt and open the folder where the script is. So since I have a VS code and it already has a terminal over here, so I'll use this. So I have also created a virtual environment so I'll recommend you guys to use a virtual environment too. And to activate that, you need to type the name of the virtual environment, then script, then activate and hit enter. So over here, you see the virtual environment is activated. And now to run this app, you need to type streamlit run and then the name of the uh, script, so it's demo.py. So as soon as you hit enter, the app would open in your browser and this is the app we created last time so it has all the forms of text so in this video we will be seeing how to add uh, data to our stream letter so i'll be creating a new script and it would be called data.py so over here we first need to import streamlet as st then we need pandas so you need to type import pandas as pd so if you don't have pandas installed in your environment you need to type pip install pandas and then we will also be needing input numpy as np so again, if you don't have NumPy, you need to type pip install NumPy. So there are different ways in which you can display data. And there are different types of data that we deal with. So the data can be a, in a form of list or a tuple, even in a dictionary, or can be a CSV file or an Excel file, or maybe a pandas data frame. So first of all, let's just see what all data data forms we can have. So let's first create a list with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we will convert this to a numpy array. So I'll say it np dot array and pass a. Then we can have multiple dimensional array. So I'll change this nd and and dot reshape and I have to reshape it in a form of let's say two comma four so it can also be a dictionary so I'll type dictionary and that would be name name then maybe my age let's say and maybe my city let it be in order so now we have a dictionary then we can also have a pandas data frame so i'll just import it so i'll name it as data is equal to pd dot read csv and I have a salary data CSV so it is in data and then salary data dot CSV so first of all let's see how this data looks like so I'll print data and save this so I'll type python and then data.py. So 
over here you see this is the data frame that we got using the read csv file so now let's see how you can display data so there are a couple of ways for data frames so first of them is called the data frame so it is st dot data frame and then you need to pass the data which needs to be displayed so let's say we first want to display a and then you have an option for width and height so i'll let it be for now and save this and run this stream list run and data dot by so our server is running and so i can go so over here this is the list that we had created and it is being displayed now so let's just pass now n over here and see what we get so i'll click always rerun so again since it is a numpy array it would be rendered same as the list now we'll see of the nd array where we change the shape so i'll save this and now over here you can see it got changed into 2 by 4 so this is the data now we get and for dictionary let's see and save this so we got this name age and city and let's finally display our uh, data which we imported from the csv so if i save this we got this so you can as I said, you can change the size, uh, height and the width of the data frame. So let's see if I pass width as 100 and then even height as 100. Let's see. So over here you see it got changed into a 100 by 100 pixel. So now if I change this. You see the height got changed and similarly if i change this i got this so there's another way you can display data and personally i find that way better option if your data is not very large so that is st dot table and like the data frame command we need to pass the data and save this so over here you can see it is a much better way to represent the data but the only disadvantage is that it displays all the data like over here we got a scroll bar but in this case we don't get a scroll bar but it displays all the data so similarly you can pass a list and over here you see and then you can also pass a dictionary save this so you see so now let's see the third method which is st.json so this json file requires a text formatted as a json file so dictionary is a good example so let's see if, if i pass dictionary so over here you see it got formatted as a json then in the last video we saw a command write so write is a very powerful command and it can also be used to display data so st dot write and now if i pass the data frame so let's say if i pass data it would automatically render it as a data frame and over here you can see this so this is what we got using data frame and this is what we got using the write command so similarly if i pass a then you can see we got a list and similarly you can pass a dictionary and it would be formatted as a json file so this is what we got using the write command so now that we have seen how to load and display data we will be seeing a very important concept of caching in Streamlit. 
So to understand this, we first need to see how Streamlit is actually working. So as soon as you save this script or interact with a widget, the whole script is being run from top to the bottom. So now imagine that you have a very heavy computational in between, or maybe you're loading a very large data set into your app. So every time you are rerunning this script, the whole computational will take a lot of time to get executed. And that's not something we want in our app. So here we can use the caching mechanism provided by the streamlet. So we can use a cache decorator for using this. So when we mark a function with a cache decorator, it will tell the streamlet that whenever this function is being called, it needs to check some of these things. So the first thing would be that the input parameter that we call with the function, then the value of any internal variable used in the function and the body of the function. And finally, the body of any function used inside the cached function. So if it is the first time that the streamlet sees the function, it would run it and save the output in the cache. So now if it sees the same function with the same parameter again. It will skip the execution of that function and give the output from the cache. So now let's see the caching in action. So I'll add the st.cache decorator and then define a function which would return us the time. So time and then make it sleep for a while. Let's say five seconds and return time dot time. So to use this time module, I need to import it. So import time and then I'll add two checkboxes. So if st dot check and this would be the first checkbox and I'll write the output of this return time function over here Red time and now copy this and paste over here with this as being the second checkbox so if we now go to the app and i click on this this would take five seconds and after that it would save the output to the cache so the second checkbox is also using the same function. So it would just use the output in the cache. So we get the same output over here. So this and this number is the same. So now if I pass a parameter over here, let's say A and now this would be one and this would be two. And let me uncheck this over here and save this. And now go over here. Now this would take five seconds of the time, and after that it would save the value to the cache. But now if I click on this two, it would not use the value in the cache, which is this, but it would execute again because the parameters are different. So again, you see it is taking five seconds to display the result. So these two numbers are different in this case now since the parameters were different. So this is how the caching is working. So that's all for this video. I hope this video was helpful to you. So in the next video, we will be seeing how you can add plots and uh, media to your streamlet app. So thank you for watching and please do like the video and subscribe to the channel.